afternoon and welcome to Midday Live with me, AC Benewa Otsu. Let's look at our top stories coming up in the next 30 minutes. President Nana Adodanko Kufado says the government's decision to deport Chinese national Aisha, Aisha Huang uh, after her reported involvement in illegal mining was a mistake. Today is World Cleanup Day as volunteers mark day where the world's largest cleanup will tell you what was done in Ghana. In business, the Ghana Bank of In business, Bank of Ghana has maintained the monetary policy rate at 16%. And on the international front, the U.S. has announced plans to send forces to Saudi Arabia in the wake of attacks against the country's oil infrastructure. So we have the details now. And President Danado Danko Akufado says the government's decision to deport Chinese national Asia One after her reported involvement in illegal mining was a mistake. He said this at a forum at Princeton University during his visit to the United States of America. Aisha Wang involved in illegal mining and her the tag the Galamse Queen after her arrest in May 2017. The, the fight against illegal mining in Ghana is something that has never been systematically undertaken until I came into office. So it's, it's, it's the, a first step, and it's a beginning. I think the decision that was made to deport the ICO on hindsight was a mistake, and that is why that process, uh, that procedure has been stopped. The attitude and the thinking was that the problems involved in prosecuting, then having to uh, look, uh, hibernate and look after, etc. It was just better to send the person off. But I think it was a mistake. And it, the, the response to that has been the amendment of the law that has now stiffened the number and enhanced the sanctions for people, both Ghanaians and foreigners who are engaged. We say that 20 people presently in custody, that may well be. I don't have the exact figure, but that may well be. But they are being in the process of being processed for court. Uh, and I have no doubt that very soon they will be put before court. Unfortunately, they're going to be put before court under these new laws that have been recently passed. To other issues now, security analyst Adam Bona has rubbish calls demanding the resignation of CID boss Mami Tiwa Adudankwa. He strongly believes she is the best person to occupy the position, irrespective of her comments and issues uh, surrounding the Takrade missing girls who have been confirmed dead by forensic DNA tests. Mr. Bona was speaking on our Key Points program earlier. Two years ago, you, you want to say instrument for the CID itself to use to work in terms of a uh, little handy stuff was not there. Two years ago, uh, Dr. Fuakwa probably was not in the scene. And when I say he was not in the scene, I mean his university. is one of the universities that is today collaborating with the police CID, training the police CID in terms of uh, crime scene management and doing all that. And I'm aware they are assisting the police CID today as we, say, as, we, as we speak. And so I've just answered your question by saying that Mami Atiwa is the best to do this job. She's the best to She's do this job. She's the best to do this job. If we are not very careful, we don't separate emotions from professionalism, then we mess up. You see, mine is that sometimes... Yeah, but, yeah, but Adam, when I wait, 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 wait. Is key. Say that again? Emotional intelligence to his Emotional mind. intelligence is key. Yes. But if you are not so very careful, wait, wait, I'm say. going to, I'll answer your question. Sure. You see, we, if, if we are not very careful, I have had people call me and say, Hatambona, Mami Atiwa is related to the president. Okay? Mm. And the question I asked was, how do you know she's related to the president? Is it because she's Abu Dankwa? 
And I had several people call me about that. Which is a marital name. Mm. Okay. And the Adudankwa, I am told, is her husband's name. And so, most of the bruhaha, most of the noises that's going on about her, has to do with the mere fact that some section of our society, who probably are loudest, probably are following that trajectory where they believe is that she is related, related to the president. Hundreds of volunteers joined hands on the Osu Beach in Accra to mark World Cleanup Day. The volunteers vowed to evacuate heaps of refuse at the beaches and its surroundings. The shoreline along Osu Beach behind the Independence Square in Accra is an eyesore. Apart from its negative impact on tourism, the insanitary conditions threaten the health of residents. Efforts at keeping the beach along the Usu stretch clean is not receiving support. As individuals, as groups, as organizations, as the government, if we all come together and come up with a, a, a strategy that we can use to clean up the environment, I think it will work. Hundreds of volunteers thronged the Usu beach to embark on the cleanup exercise to mark the World Cleanup Day. The exercise started at 6 a.m. on Saturday. Over seven organizations joined hands together for the cleanup exercise at the beach. Participants set aside days to evacuate heaps of refuse at the beaches and its surrounding. And we know currently that by 2050, if we don't change our attitude, we will have more plastic in the sea than fish. So there is an urgent need for us to do something to save the environment. Open defecation is common here. Defying the Municipal Assembly's bylaws to arrest and prosecute offenders. And away from sanitation, let's get to the education sector where 79% of basic uh, public basic schools in Ghana do not have access to safe drinking water and improved toilet facilities, according to a 2018 survey by the Education Management Information System. The development, according to World Vision, threats the learning outcomes of schools, hence a challenge to advance sanitation among pupils and has been launched. Sanitation and hygiene has been the priority of the Ghanaian government since it conforms to goal six of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Children in poor sanitary endemic areas are the major vulnerable group. Observing best sanitary practices, especially in basic schools in the country, has now been the focus due to pupils' vulnerability to ailments. Available statistics from the Education Management Information System indicate 49% of public basic schools comprising 7,400 have no improved source of drinking water. 2 million people from public primary schools and 43,000 private schools pupils are affected nationwide, while 30% of basic schools have no toilet facilities at all, leading to open defecation in some schools. Another study by two KNUST professors, Professor Nyako and Apia Efa, projected the country will require $147 million to provide wash facilities in all public schools. It is sad to observe that children die every day from diseases like diarrhea, cholera, and typhoid fever when these are easily preventable with affordable and proven interventions such as the use of improved latrines and appropriate hand washing behavior with soap and running water. In addressing the phenomenon, World Vision Ghana has launched an annual writing contest on sanitation targeting pupils in upper primary and junior high schools across the country. Participating pupils are to write an open letter to the president identifying major sanitation problems in their school or community and describe how it is affecting teaching and learning and proper solutions. What a child just needs to do is to just respond to the essay topic and our essay will be published in the junior graphic. Once we receive the entries, we have examiners who are going to mark them. We are going to have a panel of experts who are going to quiz the selected best 10 and then after that we are going to select the winner and the runners up. Chairman of Coalition of NGOs in Water and Sanitation, Martin Derry, called for the harnessing of resources for effective results. 
As we continue implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals as a country, it is my fervent hope and belief that stakeholders would collaborate effectively to devise more pragmatic and innovative ways of addressing the sanitation challenge confronting the nation in order to attain an open defecation free Ghana. The winner of the contest will be made World Vision Sanitation Ambassador for the year. In other news, the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service has established four more regional drug law enforcement units in Bono, Volta, Eastern and Western regions. Director General of CID, COP, Mamiya Tiwa Adredanko says the move is to consolidate gains made in the illicit drug fight in the country. The Police service started in 2014 following a baseline survey by the Criminal Investigations Department in collaboration with U.S. ODC in respect of the CID's capacity to fight the drug menace in the country. The results led to the Capacity Building Initiative culminating in the establishment of the Drug Law Enforcement Unit at the CID headquarters in 2015. For the past three years or so, the CID administration has been consistently training and resourcing personnel to be efficient and effective in their professional dispensation. It is therefore imperative that the drug law enforcement units continually acquire new knowledge to update their skills and trade crafts to effectively deal with the dynamic challenges the current global drug trafficking posed to all of us. The first national seminar for heads of CID Drug Law Enforcement Unit in Accra was therefore to re-examine the performance of the various units and draw strategies for the future. Unexamined life is not worth living. We've been doing lots of programs under this cooperation and we need to come together and then sit down to review our activities for the past four years. Look at where we have performed well to improve upon our performance, where we have not done so well, what will be the way forward? Director General of Police CID, COP Mami Yati Wadu Dankwa, urged personnel to up their game and ensure knowledge acquired is put to good use for the benefit of the taxpayer. We cannot continue to do the same thing and expect different results. So anytime that we come here and then we train, if we don't let the training have impact on our work, no matter how much you have been trained, if you don't let it impact on the way you do your work, then it's like just for entertainment. This is May Day Live. A self-help project targeted at fixing all deplorable roads in the Okaikwe South Municipality of the Greater Accra Region has commenced by the Member of Parliament for the area, Ahmed Arthur. The NP has also manufactured a bitumen sprayer and compressors for the easy sealing of deplorable roads. Okaikwe South is one of the municipalities with increased population. Commuting from one place to another in the area is a difficult task. Some dilapidated urban roads connecting suburbs have not received attention. The roads serve as alternative routes for motorists whenever traffic builds up on the main Kaswa Kaneshi Road. This has been a major concern for residents as well. Member of Parliament for Kaikwe South, Ahmed Atha, has intervened. With support from the community, the MP has commenced fixing some of the roads. Ahmed Arthur, who believes in finding local solutions to local problems, manufactured a bitumen sprayer and compressors aiding construction works. The motorized sprayer is diesel powered. Some youth have also been recruited to do the job. The MP said his invention was driven by research. If the urban roads doesn't have the resources to fix all the roads, what can I also do as the member of parliament for my constituency. You took time to go and queue and vote for me. You voted for me yes to go and make laws. But besides making laws, I live within the constituency and people come to me with their problems. Why shouldn't I respond to it? It is due to this kind of situation. That is why I decided to look at how best I can fix the roads. The Okaikwe South MP said he is ready to offer his colleagues MPs support to do same in their respective jurisdictions. 
So it's not like selling, but I'll let them. I'll tell them how much it will cost to get the components, and then and then I produce it for them. Residents were happy the Member of Parliament led an initiative to address a social problem. They want government support to expedite work. Well, that's a good one there. Uh, we'll take a break here. Stay with us. More news coming up. So business now and the Bank of Ghana has maintained a monetary policy rate at 16%. Government Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Edison, noted maintaining the policy rates was informed by the downward trend of headline inflation and the need to consolidate domestic economic growth. The policy rate was being, has been pegged at 16% since January. The monetary policy rate was 25.5% in November 2016. It was gradually reduced to 21% in September 2017 and further cut to 17% in November 2018. From January 2019 to September, the rate has been maintained at 16%. At 890th meeting, the Monetary Policy Committee noted the continued slowdown in the global economy. On the domestic front, the committee observed that growth remains strong and the medium-term outlook is positive. There was also positive economic indicators, including headline inflation at 7.8% in August. The committee was concerned about the continued revenue weakness, which requires expenditure adjustment to contain the larger-than-projected budget deficit. Governor of the Bank of Ghana observed the medium-term outlook is expected to be driven by improvements in business sentiment and expectations of increased production in the oil and gas and mining sector. The fiscal situation remains a concern and strengthened efforts would be needed to close the deficit gap. The committee was concerned about the continued revenue weakness, which requires expenditure adjustments to contain a larger than projected budget deficit. It will help underpin investor confidence in the Ghanaian economy and reduce the burden on monetary policy. Dr. Ernest Addison indicated the banking sector remains well capitalized. And that's it for business. We have sports coming up. Stay with us. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Yao Ovozula. We now a clear part is in sight now for who gets to contest the upcoming elections of the president of the Ghana Football Association as the deadline for the submission of forms ended on Friday. Six persons, including Fred Papo, Ket Okweku, Wilfred Kweku Osei Palmer, George Efriye, and Nanayawan Ponsa all filed their nominations. An Accra-based lawyer, Amanda Clinton, also filed to join as the only female. The Accra offices of the Ghana Football Association was a spectacle all day as the aspirants came to foul with Nanayao Amponsa and George Efriye storming the premises with a huge following. One man, George Efriye, cannot transform Ghana football. We need the collective ideas of all my colleagues to come on board and to chart a new face for Ghana football. I am ready to move Ghana football beyond corruption, to move Ghana football beyond aid, to move Ghana football beyond nepotism, cronyism, to create opportunity for all. It seems that a lot of people have been in the GFA for a long time, so there perhaps needs to be a mixture of the old and the new, because I could be considered the mediator, someone that everybody could come to in order to voice their concerns, their views, and I would make an informed decision. So that's what I bring in particular. We are saying that we are the game changers, okay? And we are hopeful that on Tuesday, we'll preach or give the food that, that, that the Ghanaian industry have badly missed. Well, that's all the sports. 
18 GMB Central Regional Representative Perpetual Labi, also known as Tiwa, has officially launched her project. The Perpetual Impact Foundation seeks to educate women on preterm conditions through community outreaches and empower the girl child with ICT education. Two and one. The drive to improve quality delivery in health did not crash even after she was painfully exited from GMB last year. Describing the platform as a learning curve, Perpetua Opey Labi is championing a new course. I have a dream that one day mothers who deliver preterm babies will do so with the best hygienic practices. A system that provides hope to the 128,000 babies delivered to the motherland Ghana will have access to an environment that promotes holistic development and good upbringing. And that's all in news for this afternoon. Thanks so much for watching. My name is AC Benewa Otu. Stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs. Good afternoon.